Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Corey Alexander Willette, and it is my joy to be the pastor here of this wonderful congregation. Joining me in worship leadership this morning is Margaret Fisher. And joining me in worship leadership is all of you, because we would not have worship without each of you. And no matter if this is your first time or you have been coming for years, whether you are strong in your faith or you still have some questions, whether you are worshiping with us in person or joining us online, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. And it is a joy to worship with each of you this morning. I invite you now to join me for our call to worship. We come, for God gathers us here with that community called faith. When the hungry is served first, when the thirsty drinks lots water. We come, for God welcomes us here into that home called grace. When the maker of holy grows his soul, when the strangers and birds We come, for God reunites us here Sisters and brothers in the family called love. I invite you now to say with me our mission statement. Growing disciples of Christ for the transformation of our community. We have a few announcements this morning. Uh, first and foremost is that this afternoon from 2 to 4, we will be having our trunk or treat in the parking lot. We will also be having our blessing of the animals. And so you are invited to bring kids and pets in costume alike. We will have treats for both dogs and cats and treats for humans too. Also on November 11th, the office will be closed in observance of Veterans Day. And Nita, I know that you have an announcement about fuel. Good morning, St. Good morning. Both in the house and online. We went shopping for fuel at Sam's Friday. I'd already gotten online on Thursday and work, working, on, working up our order. And I discovered at that point we could buy zero pudding. And we give out pudding every week. We could buy zero cheese. But we thought, okay, we'll just get extra peanut butter crackers. We could buy zero juice. They were out. And when they do get it, three case maximum. Three cases won't even do one week. So, we shopped for what we could get. And then we got the load below after Emily had ordered, loaded up 55 packages of peanut butter crackers on a cart that um, we could only have five. So we're still short 50 boxes of crackers. I've, I've got a box up here on the front pew I meant to bring up. Okay, we need your help. You all have been so very, very faithful in supporting the fuel program. Um, you have brought bags, and we need them, because we're feeding 115 kids a week. You have given money. And right now, we're okay on money. We're not rolling in it, but we're okay. We could have bought everything that we needed to get us to January if Sam's had just had it. So here's, here's the plea. When you go to Sam's, Okay, these are the crackers, the packages of crackers. There's 40, 
40 packs in, in this box. That the, the long letters have five. These are about six dollars and a half, seven dollars. Seven and a half. Seven and a half, okay. Um, please pick up some and, and donate them to, to Fuel. And we will figure out a way you can drop them off at the office store. Uh, Wednesday Fuel will be here at 10 o'clock. But we'll find you a place to, to donate these things. We need 50 more of these to get us to January. And that's if our numbers don't go up after Thanksgiving like they usually do. The second thing is fruit juice boxes. Right now, we have enough for one week in our, our food pant in our um, fuel pantry area. Sam's has none as of Friday. If you happen to go to Sam's, you're looking for the brand Apple and Eve. Anything else is not 100% juice. Apple and Eve. Instead of Adam and Eve, it's Apple and Eve. Okay, when you go to Walmart, they have two brands and you get them in little eight pack, eight box packs, Juicy Juice, Apple, and Eve. We can use all of those that you feel willing to donate. Um, I realized, Emily, that Kroger's has Mott's. It's also 100% juice in the six point something ounce size. They're a little bit more. As much as we could use money, right now we need your ability to shop because of limits on what the fuel team can buy at any one time. And I really don't want to get 14 checks so I can go to Sam's and buy five boxes of crackers, go home, buy, come back, buy five more boxes. Help us out, folks, if you would, please. The other thing I want to say to you is we are in a, a period of praising our stewardship and lifting up our stewardship. Please don't neglect your tithe and offering to help out with fuel or safe or any of our other special projects. Okay? Um, please continue to be faithful in your offerings and your tithes. Thank you, Cindy. Are there any other announcements this morning? Seeing none, I now invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together our opening hymn, Christ for the World We Sing, hymn number 568. Thank you. 
to week four of our stewardship series on our membership vows. And we have re reached the week of service. And one of the things that I love about our membership vows is that each builds upon the next. Prayer is at the root of all that we do. Before we can be present with one another, we must be in prayer for ourselves and each other. We recognize our gifts through being in community with one another as they are revealed to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And now as we think about what it means to be in service, we see the ways that they are interconnected. When I was in high school, the youth group I was a part of went to Mountaintop every summer. Mountaintop was a very special experience. And on the first day, you would get divided into your small group that you would be doing service projects with all week. And they would talk about the importance of using power tools and building the things we were supposed to be building and painting the things we were supposed to be painting and how to tar a roof. But they also talked about the fact that some of us would spend time just sitting with the families, hearing their stories, talking to them, just being present, and that that was as important of a part of the service as the using power tools was. And this encouragement 
allowed us to feel confident and maybe a little bit more comfortable in getting out of our comfort zones. One summer when I was 16, I was somehow the only person in our group that had experienced building a six by six shed, which meant that I as a 16 year old were in, was in charge of building that six by six shed. And if you can see the problems with this, then we're on the same page. A few weeks later in that summer, my counselor happened to be one of my dad's students at the Wesley Foundation at Tennessee Tech, and he informed me that they had to go back in and completely rebuild the six by six shed that I was supposed to be in charge of leaving. That doesn't diminish the service we did because we were still in ministry with the family that we were working with. Our text this morning is not necessarily unfamiliar. I always seem to forget, though, that it comes during Jesus' judgment discord. In the opening verses, we hear these apocalyptic images of Christ's kingship. The image of the Son of Man coming in glory reflects imagery from Daniel and recalls other places in Matthew's Gospel where Jesus foretells the coming judgment. Jesus calls the sheep those who are blessed by my Father. The blessing of the Beatitudes foreshadow Jesus' eschatological teaching, his teaching about these end times. And although the Greek word used in our verses today is not the same as the one in the Beatitudes, both convey this blessing from God. In the Beatitudes, Jesus blesses those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake and who are reviled for their faith. Likewise, Jesus' teaching on the blessing of the sheep comes after he has warned his disciples that they will be hated by the world and tortured for his sake. In Christ's kingdom, the blessed ones are those who do not retaliate with violence, but bear witness to a new empire by serving others. The blessed ones have demonstrated their faithfulness by performing acts of loving kindness. The charge to care for the poor and the disadvantaged can be found throughout Scripture, but it is especially exhibited in the ministry of Jesus. In this gospel, Christ has announced the arrival of God's kingdom. While he cures the sick, welcomes the despised, and provides food for the hungry, and he orders his disciples to carry on his ministry by doing likewise. The service of the least concerns all people everywhere. Since Jesus has warned the disciples repeatedly of their upcoming persecution, the context of this passage suggests that believers would certainly be among those who are suffering and in prison. Now, the primary purpose of a prison at the time is different than what we understand today. It was not to incarcerate individuals for an indefinite period of punishment, but to have a place for them to await trial. And it is often the responsibility of loved ones to provide some basic necessities while the person was in jail. Not only are believers to provide this service for one another, but they are to demonstrate Christ's love by ministering to others who may have no one to care for them. The righteous ones perform these deeds with no idea that they were ministering to Christ. Jesus says that whenever they gave food to the hungry, welcomed a stranger, clothed the naked, or visited the sick or imprisoned, they acted in kindness.
for Jesus himself. And Jesus can identify with the least of these because he has walked in their shoes. On the other hand, those who have failed to see the needs of the disadvantaged have acted as though they have never seen Jesus. They have not followed in Christ's footsteps. They have not continued to do the work that Christ has called them to do. They have not displayed who the real king is. Throughout the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus' teaching has announced and illustrated the kingdom of God. And God's kingdom does not function like a typical kingdom. This divine reign has invaded the world and is good news especially for those on the fringes of society. This rule welcomes those who have no status and those who seek to serve others rather than exploit them. Those who have experienced God's kingdom cannot go back to life as it once was. Theologian Stanley Hauerwas writes, the difference between followers of Jesus and those who do not know Jesus is that those who have seen Jesus no longer have any excuse to avoid the least of these. The blessed ones are those who have seen a king who is not like the kings of this world. They are blessed because they know a king who brings real peace who sees the needy, and who hears the cries of the oppressed. In God's kingdom, no one is hungry, naked, sick, or alone. To bear witness to Christ is to be a messenger of this kingdom, to serve others and thereby profess the invasion of God's glorious empire. The United Methodist Church has a document titled Our, Method Our Membership Vows that go into deep detail about the theological and historical basis for the membership vows we take when we join the church. And as it talks about service, it says, Through our service with and for the poor, we become a prayer of intercession spoken with hands and feet. Our mission as United Methodists is to make disciples of Christ for the transformation of the world. John Wesley said, the world is my parish. And so our membership vows call us to make the world our parish one community at a time. And doing this task requires us to be willing to see Christ and those who have been marginalized without judgment. It is easy to see someone in need and immediately move to judgment. We wonder if they are looking for a way to fund an addiction. We wonder if they are actually in need or just trying to prey on the goodness of others. We question the choices that made them get to that place. They must be lazy. Why don't they just get a job? Regardless of our judgments of them, Christ is within them. Christ is within them regardless of their needs. Christ is within them and it is our responsibility to recognize Christ. Service at its core is willingness to see Christ in all people. It invites us to leave our comfort zones. It invites us to use the gifts that have been given to us by the Holy Spirit to care for one another. It invites us to be present with all people, especially the least of these. 
And in doing so, we are living out our prayer for the world. Service is packing snacks for the children at Burt and St. B. Elementary Schools. Service is providing food for our neighbors every first and third Wednesday. Service is about opening our space to our community so that they might find the support that they need. Service is providing financial assistance to communities that have been devastated by natural disaster. Service is showing up for one another in the hardest of times. Service is the unreserved recognition of Christ. And so I ask you, as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your service? If so, please say, I will. I will. I will. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer, may it be so. Amen. I invite our ushers to come forward. Let us pray. O oh God, pour out your grace upon these our gifts, that they may be used so that we might recognize Christ in all people. We give you thanks for the gifts that you have given us, and we now humbly return them to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, I want to direct your attention to the back of the bulletin where you will find a full list, our full prayer list. Are there any other joys or concerns you would like to lift up as a community this morning? Seeing none, let us go to God in prayer. Holy and loving God, we give you thanks for this space, for this time together, 
for the ability to gather once more in worship of you. We come before you aware of the baggage we bring, aware of the prayers of our hearts, aware of the needs of our community, aware of the times we have fallen short. But we know that this is a safe space. We know that in this space, we are free from the judgment we place on ourselves and others. We are free from the labels. We are free as your beloved children. Oh God, you have called each and every one of us. You have called us to this space. You have called us to share our gifts. You have called us to be in prayer for one another. And you have called us to your service. Oh God, we give to you all of our being. We give to you our willingness to serve, our willingness to give, our willingness to love one another. And so continue to give us the strength to be your hands and feet in the world. that we might share Christ's love with all people, that we might see Christ in one another. Oh God, we lift up to you all of our prayer, prayers that we share with one another and ones that remain deep in our hearts. For you have searched us and know us and love us deeply. And there is nothing we can ever do that will separate us from that love. And now, as your beloved children created in your own image, we pray together the prayer that Jesus first taught, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> Our closing hymn this morning is Here I Am, Lord, to number 593. You're invited to stand as you are able. <laughs>